It's a crime now to be openly Jewish in London, according to the Met Police. Guys, I'm going to read you this article, I'm going to explain it, and then I'm going to give you the wider implications, and the wider implications of this are terrifying. I'm also going to throw in a little bit of a, a speculation from my experience working in law enforcement, working in military, working in public order. So... Recently, guys, an article has come out, um, a video is online. Uh, well, let me read you the article, actually. So, article from BBC. Met Police apologize, Met Police apologise for openly Jewish comment. So, they're not apologising for the way they handle this. They're apologising for the comment that the officer made. So, Met Police has apologised after an officer said an anti-Semitism charity leader looked openly Jewish, as he was threatened with arrest for being near a pro-Palestine march. So, take it for what it is, guys, okay? That's the article. Now let's now let's unpack that a little bit. So, if you want to go and watch the video, it's there online, it's on, you know, it's all over the internet. So, there's some, you know, a Jewish guy, he's got his skull cap on, and he's, he's not being aggressive, he's not being, you know, he's not doing any... Oh, I'm focusing. Yeah, he's not being aggressive, he's not being... He's not doing anything that they're, you know, that they're claiming he's doing. Now... The thing that the police officer said is absolutely chilling. He said, there's too many of them, we can't protect you. Remember that phase, guys, okay? There's too many of them, we can't protect you. Now, you know, um, and, his, um, and his wording was, you are being openly Jewish. Now, the way this police officer's acting and the way he's talking, he's obviously being briefed up in some, you know, before he went out on the street. And I, you know, I've got, it's my speculation that the officer in charge, the sergeant, however they're configured, he'll say, right, guys, if anyone's there being openly Jewish, we need to get them out of the way or arrest them because they're in breach of the peace. Guys, it's my understanding that we have laws in this country to protect everyone all right whether you're jewish muslim christian it doesn't matter you should be afforded that same level of protection right okay let's go back to what this uh, what the officer said now and this is chilling guys okay there's too many of them we can't protect you these uh protests these pro-palestine marches and let me just caveat this guys okay the loss of life in gaza is absolutely disgusting What's happening there is, you know, it, it, we can't put words on it. But what I'm talking about here is not Gaza. This is the UK now. And people have a right to protest. But what they don't have a right to do is threaten other people, intimidate other people. You know, we, we have life, life and liberty, you know, and we, we should all have the, you know, have the opportunity to be happy. Um, anyway, so remember what the guy, what the police officer said. There's too many of them. We can't protect you. OK, fine. This is in London. This is pro-Palestine marches. Fine. Okay. What about when it comes to your town? What about when, you know, if there's a mob of whoever and there's too many of them? Are the police just going to turn a blind eye? Or are they going to do what they, they're supposed to do? And, get, and say, do you know what? No, we're going to quash this. Guys, the fact that he's using this language means that somebody's told him to say this language. Because police officers don't just... You know, they don't just they don't just make these phrases up themselves. They get told this at a briefing higher up and that will have come from the top all the way down to the bottom level. And then that's why they're talking about it. Guys, I really feel we're heading to such a catastrophe in this country if the police don't get some strength about them and start doing the right thing. And by the right thing, guys, here's an idea. Just enforce the laws. Protect people. Don't protect them all. All right. That's not what we pay you for. Guys, it's absolutely terrifying that, you know, that that, that that language is being used on the streets. Remember it again, guys, because it is so chilling. There's too many of them, we can't protect you. That's not how the police work. So basically, the police are saying, we are helpless because there are too many of them. We are helpless because we have no powers. That is what he's saying, and that is an admission of it. Guys, if this comes to your local town, who's going to protect you? Because he's already said... You know, the police policy now is there's too many of them, whoever the them may be, you know, they can't protect us. So where do we go forward? How do we move forward? I'm already getting comments on here, guys, about people having no trust in the police, people having no faith in the police, people not wanting to report crimes because they don't trust the police. 
Guys, it's a, te it's a very slippery slope we're on if we don't trust the police. We need to empower the police. We need to bring back, you know, stability in the police. And with a strong police force, with a strong military, you know, we have a strong country. At the moment, we have eroded our own security. And this is, you know, and, and, and this is the repercussions of it. Guys, this is only an isolated incident, not isolated. This, the protests and these marches are predominantly isolated to London. But what when these expand? What when the Middle East goes up in flames when Israel and um, Iran and the greater Middle East and a wider and a wider region, when they start, you know, fighting each other proper? What's going to happen? Are the police just going to say, hey, guys, you know what? There's too many of them. We can't protect you. Is that what they're going to do? Or are they going to draft the military in? Where are they going to come from? Who's going to pay them? What's going to happen? Guys, we really are on a dark path at the moment. And I don't see any way of us getting out here. Guys, that's just my opinion. What's your opinion? Am I right? Am I wrong? Was the policeman in his right, you know, to say, hey, listen, you know what? Um, being openly Jewish in the UK, it's now a crime. So come on, get into the meat wagon. Or do you know what? Or was he just an isolated officer who wasn't briefed? Judging by him, looking at his demeanour, how he's talking, he doesn't look like he's a junior officer. He looks like he's quite experienced. And I'm quite confident that he's just regurgitating or re, um, re-communicating what he's been told to him on his brief about that um, about that incident. Guys, it's a terrifying road we're going down, but let me know what you think in the comments. And don't forget to like, follow and subscribe, guys. Thank you.